from the other side and like this. But because Lord Ramachandra, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he knows, he knows everyone's heart. He knows what's, what's in their intentions. And so he accepted Vibhishan. And then he spoke something that very wonderful. He said, if anyone surrenders unto me, even one time, thinking that now I take complete shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, then from that moment on, I protect him. And I never give him up under any circumstances. This is a very wonderful statement. Uh, only the Lord, of course, can make such a statement because he's the eternal protector of the surrendered souls. So the surrendered souls are attracted to his feet. And when they take shelter there, the Lord protects them. And we have experience of this every day, uh, that, that when we approach the Lord in a service mood, that's what it means to take shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, that we, we accept him as a master and ourselves as a servant. And our service may be in various different moods, it may be in various different styles or modes of service. But still, the thing that all the devotees have in common is that they're attracted to the Lord's lotus feet. Uh, so uh, these are all liberated souls. They have no attraction to matter. Uh, they don't desire anything in this material world because they know that all these things are temporary. Uh, and that they may give a, a tiny little limited bit of pleasure, but then they're going to go away uh, with time. Time is the limiting factor in the material world. So even though we may have a very good position in this material world, that is limited. Even though we may have you know, some kind of wealth or some kind of influence or power or fame, or, you know, beauty, knowledge, or renunciation, some opulence in this material world, that opulence is simply temporary. And like Jesus said, what is the use of storing your wealth where rust, um, rust and moths will come and take it away? See, why would you put your wealth in a place where you know it's going to be lost? So why should we put our attachment and our love and our care into this material world when we know that actually Krishna and the spiritual world are eternal? See, So the liberated souls, those who are enlightened, those who know the actual Vedic philosophy, they take shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. No, nowhere else. Not in this material world, not in the mental world, the subtle world, not in the world of the demigods, or any place except the lotus feet of the Lord, wherever they might be. And this is the safe position. So now let's take a look at the, uh, the four qualities, four special qualities that belong to Krishna alone and are not found in any of the other personalities of Godhead, even Lord Narayan or Lord Ramchandra. Number 61 performer of wonderful activities. In the Brihad Vamana Purana, the Lord says, although I have many fascinating pastimes, whenever I think of the Ras Lila, which I perform with the gopis, I become eager to have it again. Hmm? You don't see this Ras Lila pastime in any other incarnation of the Lord. Uh, even when the Lord comes as, as uh, Ramachandra, he takes one wife only, Sita. But Krishna had not just 108 wives, but 16,108 wives. And in each wife had a palace, a beautiful palace. And in each palace, there were so many maidservants and so many uh, cows and bulls and so much opulence and wealth, it was just inconceivable. Each wife had, was given 10 sons by the Lord. Huh? And yet still, he doesn't think of these pastimes as anything special. Huh? 
But when the Lord thinks of Rasalila and his other pastimes in Vrindavan, oh, then he becomes eager. Oh, yes, I want this again. I want to experience this. Actually, of course, the Lord is experiencing all of his pastimes eternally in the spiritual world. But he's making this statement for our benefit. Uh, to understand the very exalted position of the gopis and the Vrindavan Lila, Braj Lila. Braja, Braja means Vrindavan. And Braja, also the Sanskrit word Braja means go. It means action. Right? And in, in Braja, in the pastimes of the Lord, there is tremendous action, tremendous activity. The uh, gopis and gopas in Vrindavan, they're not idle. Huh? They're always doing something. They're always performing activities for the Lord's pleasure. And this is meant to instruct us that if we want to please the Lord, then we should be constantly engaged in activities aimed at the Lord's pleasure. And when we do this, we find that the Lord reciprocates the pleasure that he gets from our service hundreds and thousands of times. He doesn't just give the same pleasure. He gives more. Huh? And so much that sometimes we become overwhelmed. And we can't believe, oh, this, I'm so happy, I'm so blissful. Uh, there's no anxiety. There's no, there's no worries. There's no displeasure in the spiritual world. And when we're in that spiritual consciousness, then we feel like that. Huh? So uh, try to understand. In the material world, the only way we can be free from suffering, free from worry, free from anxiety, is by ignorance. Uh, if we get intoxicated or somehow or other uh, convince our minds to forget the fact that everything in this world is temporary and that we're all going to die. Uh, that's the only way we can be without anxiety in material consciousness. But in spiritual consciousness, being happy and without anxiety is a natural, normal condition of everybody in the spiritual world. Uh, and when we're with Krishna, specifically in Krishna consciousness, we get to Krish witness Krishna's extraordinary pastimes. And you can read these in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, uh, I don't want to go into telling so many stories, uh, but we can, we can uh, discuss these pastimes. Actually, all this pastime of Krishna's appearance, uh, this is very wonderful. I will go into discussing that pastime in detail on Janmashtami itself. One devotee has said, I know about Narayan, the husband of the goddess of fortune, and I also know about many other incarnations of the Lord. Certainly all the pastimes of such incarnations are exciting to my mind, but still the pastimes of the Rasalila performed by Lord Krishna himself are wonderfully increasing my transcendental pleasure. Why? Because in the Rasalila pastime, Krishna reveals the nature of his uh, manifestation in the spiritual world. In the Rasalila, there were many, many gopis, uh, thousands and millions of gopis. And Krishna expanded himself into multiple forms to be with each and every one of them simultaneously. You see, so Krishna reveals in this pastime the fact that in the spiritual world, he is personally with each, of every, each and every one of his devotees at all times. We're never apart from Krishna in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, Krishna is always present in exactly the form and mood that the devotee most relishes. See, that's Krishna's special mercy on the devotees, especially the Brajalila devotees. So it's like virtual reality. Huh? Wherever you go, Krishna is there. And everybody is seeing like that. They think, oh, Krishna is with me alone. Well, they think, I have a special relationship with Krishna. I give some special pleasure to Krishna that only I can give. And he appreciates this very, very much. 
And it's true, actually. Krishna creates each and every jiva to give him some special service, some unique pleasure, spiritual pleasure, that only that living entity can give. This is the secret of rasa. Uh, each living entity, each devotional, uh, or sorry, each devotee, gives some special service to Krishna, that he was just perfectly created to do that. Huh? It's not like there's some kind of generic service to Krishna. That's the stage of regulative principles. The stage of regulative, regulative principles, the devotees perform generic types of service, like chanting the holy name, offering prasadam, dancing in the RT, or, you know, worshiping the deity, and so on like that. That's the regulative stage. Everybody does it the same way. But in the spontaneous stage, raga-nuga-bhakti, uh, the stage